Hello, fellow Swamp Things, I'm Pruitt, this is Jim Davis, and we understand that sometimes you get bogged down in the details of creating your, your locations, and it's hard to marshal uh, creative energies, uh, and we don't want to swamp you with it, with, with all these details, and I'm going to get to it, uh, because we admire your commitment to this game, and you shouldn't do it by yourself. So let's talk about wetlands today on WebTF. <laughs> By yourself. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Ghostfire Gaming and their new book, Grim Hollow, The Monster Grimoire, live on Kickstarter now. Get over 400 challenging dark fantasy monsters, from fey to fiends to aberrations and undead, that you can drop into any 5e campaign. Each monster comes with not just a top-notch stat block, but lore created by some of the best designers in the industry, but also suggested salvage that your players can use to create their own items. The book also comes with templates so you can easily create your own monsters, battle maps, sidekicks, and familiars. Plus, you can pick up awesome minis and monster cards to make your prep at the table a snap. We like this project so much, we're a stretch goal. If this project reaches $900,000, we are going to write 10 monsters. So help us get there, y'all. Link in the comments and in the description. Okay, Jim. Uh, first off, I don't know why you have me in an environment such as this. I hate flies. I don't like being uh, humid. Uh, I just don't like it. But wetlands, this is where you have us today, Jim. Uh, and I will never forget. I will never forgive you. For the yeah. Lyme disease that I contracted yeah, the, while the snakes. And the, this is one of those things you're into when, like, uh, y you know, you're taking things that obviously exist in the real world and trying to like gamify them and codify them. And sort of like, what categories do you do you break things down into? Because there's nature doesn't care what <laughs> you know what what kind of categories you want to call these. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I think in you know, thinking about wetlands overall, you're right. They are very much like grasslands or, or forests or something in that the way that this environment's portrayed from like, what's the topography like? Uh, what kind of vegetation's here? Is it really wet or just kind of wet, you know, is going to change how you think of your wetland. So looking at it in terms of like some actual definitions, uh, just for uh, our DMs out there who want to make sure they keep their various wetland uh, terminology uh, uh, correct. Mm -hmm. A swamp uh, is a wetland that has trees, essentially. It's, it's a flooded forest, right? Think of yeah. it like that. It, you could be talking about like uh, bayous that are along the, uh, you know, the Gulf Coast uh, in the southern United States, where it's like these are slow moving rivers and creeks or, you know, like little lakes or, or rivulets that have split off from a larger uh, body of water um, that mm -hmm. run through uh, trees. Or something else entirely, where it's like a mangrove swamp or something like that, where it's tidal and, and the like. Point of a swamp is trees and water. Uh, <laughs> similarly, with, uh, or not similarly, but uh, uh, next we have a, a marsh, which is more like grasses and herbaceous plants and water. Uh, and mm -hmm. then if uh, the water there is particularly acidic, it becomes a bog. Uh, and if it's uh, alkaline, it will become a fin. And so those are like our big four breakdowns and for me this is one of those things where as a dungeon master i want to be accurate in how i portray things if i call something a swamp one of my players goes well i want to hide behind a tree in it i didn't conceive of it as having a lot of trees then that's an inaccuracy on my part which is why i think it's worthwhile to just kind of go over it now that we have our kind of our four main uh you know types of wetland uh, to think about Let's move on into those features and those hazards. Um, and uh, w w like, where do you want, where do you want to start, Jim? First off, have you ever actually like been in a, like on the bayou? Like, yeah. have you ever been in a boat on the bayou? Mm -hmm. It is terrifying. Like I, I haven't yeah. been like in Southern, Southern Louisiana, but my grandparents had some land with, with some ponds in the back. They were like fishing stock ponds. And mm -hmm. we'd get in the boat every now and again and go to the little feed that fed the pond and then go a couple of miles down. And once the trees start getting overhead and yeah. your boat starts bumping into roots and you can't see them, 
And then you mm-hmm. start seeing ripples in the water on the sides of you. And you're like, right, right. Little snakes oh, crap. Swimming what, what, along. what is that? Yeah. Is that a snake? Is it a fish? Is it a crocodile? Like, it's, <laughs> you, you start to realize like, oh, crap, can we please go home? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know, all those things we said about grasslands and, and forests about how like, oh, yeah, sometimes you can't see what's going on or the grass might be up to your you know, to your waist, or there's like trees everywhere. Like it's like that, but you could be in any amount of water. It could be Mm -hmm. up to your ankles. It could be, you know, well over your head. And I think like it's that adding of the aquatic element to this that I think makes wetlands such great adventure locations and why you see swamps and marshes and the like uh, featured so prominently is it's like, yeah, it's, it's a pain in the ass to get around here. You have like, you know, sticking with swamps, you have all of the struggles of a forest of just like there's just stuff there's trees everywhere there that that means there's all kinds of leaves and branches uh that fall out from them um roots and the like oh and also it's all wet i need a boat or i'm gonna get stuck Mm -hmm. in the mud or or sink down into something i don't want or not see a threat uh before it's too late Mm -hmm. um and so i think like thinking about those uh kinds of environments from that perspective like what's it like to be here is um is is how we form the basis of turning these things into uh to adventure environments um yeah and uh, and if you need your juices going make sure to hit like and subscribe hit that bell get those notifications also in the description and comments there is a link to our uh mailing list because we have big big old things coming out and you want to be part of that and you want to know about it like you said like if you're in a swamp and you need a boat but you hit that part of the swamp where there's not as much water so now you have to carry your boat right (laughs) because you're gonna need it again but then having to watch out for like like you said there's all kinds of leaves and branches that drop down that might cover what otherwise would be nothing but water but now it has this surface on it that looks solid and you might step looks into solid. like, you know, you might step into a, a little little patch of water and get stuck in the mud or. But right, just that right. messing with movement, which I think a lot of players like they hate that, like players hate it when you mess with their I can move, especially especially when you get into like the barbarians and the monks like, yeah, you can move 60 feet around. Right. But <laughs> there's hidden pools, there's but there's snags. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but so, yeah, that's just the 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 impediment to mobility is is one of the biggest things uh, in a swamp that really gets me. I think so. And then following on that, like sort of the navigation of it, like are you in the right channel? Are you are you in the you know? Did you get lost? Did you get turned around somewhere? If the water level changes from the time of day based on like say tidal forces or something like that, if it's close to a coast, like all of these variables give you ways to sort of change the environment. But but like when you think of I'm in a boat. I've got the vegetation around me. Everything's lightly obscured. I'm in, I'm, you know, I can barely see. There's just sort of pockets of dim light uh, that are under here. Um, and then you throw in like an enemy of some kind. You throw in that bullywug or lizard folk or, or frog a moth or whatever. And, uh, and now you have a really uh, dangerous environment to, uh, to have an encounter in. Um, I, I like that about them. I like that about even if you're going, you know, outside of a swamp and getting it more into like a marsh where there's sort of like reeded lakes and, and, uh, open channels that you can kind of, uh, you know, navigate your boat in, uh, relatively safely. But then there's patches, there's just like giant, you know, mounds of grass or something like that is that you're still dealing with a lot of hiding places for potential threats and a difficulty of getting around the place. And I think like building on those two themes, the hazards and threats that you can start incorporating into these environments are things like drowning, the the, the threat mm-hmm. of my heavily armored or laden down with loot <laughs> uh, and gear adventurer that falls off a boat or that's pulled off a boat or that slips and, and it, you know, that patch of water so far has been like knee deep, but it, there's a sudden drop off that we didn't see. Maybe it was dug mm-hmm. out <laughs> and, and deliberate like that's a big one. Uh, you can really surprise a player with that one. Um, quicksand is another, right? Like it just looks like ground until you step on it and the particulate matter agitates and basically becomes like a liquid and starts to kind Mm -hmm. of 
slowly uh, suck you in if you're, uh, you know, if you struggle and the like. Like, can you get out of that? Can you get out of that while you're under attack by something? Um, thinking of less like threats and hazards to like bodily harm and the like. You mentioned humidity. And this is where I start going like, every time I have been in a wetland, whether it's marsh, swamp, whatever, right? Whether I'm in a boat, having to walk through it, I'm miserable. I hate yeah. it. It's terrible. <laughs> and I think this is a place to introduce custom conditions and flaws that your characters pick up because of the environment they're in. And especially if you're like, you have players who are looking for role-playing prompts for what their travel experiences are like and like navigating mm -hmm. these environments. Doing something like this is a good way to um, show them like, yeah, this is affecting your character. Your character has yeah. this irritability flaw now. Like, right? Like, they're just they're short agitated. on patience. Yeah, <laughs> they're the agitated, agitated condition. <laughs> right, yeah. They're the miserable condition, the depraved condition. Um, and, and so it's like, those are ways that you can portray this mechanically and kind of back it up as well as giving role-playing prompts. Uh, without having to like constantly threaten the life of the party with quicksand and and clouds of sturges and things like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Inflict well, them with misery. To, <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you move on to like, you know, we haven't really talked that much about fins or bogs, but like when you start adding in mm -hmm. that acidic level of a bog, but yeah. this is fantasy. So yeah. you can you can go and ramp that up a little bit and then make some of those pools sentient if you want and like mm -hmm. start throwing in some 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 version of like oozes or whatever oh, yeah. that are just waiting in these bogs uh right. i mean i know i know yeah, that's not I know of another property yeah that's not mud <laughs> down on there you don't want to step in it but i know of another pro another fantasy property that had a really cool scene in a bog you know what i'm saying right. so yeah. talking about <laughs> like, where a horse gets uh, lost well, now you just reminded me of that. Oh God, now I'm oh. going to cry about our tech. See, I'm telling you, it's uh, in fantasy. Yeah, swamps. I was, I was, I was talking more about Lord, Lord of the Rings in the, oh. in the, with the, <laughs> in, yes, I, in I, the I bog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that scene I, always I, really got to me because the, the thought of like drowning. Uh, oh yeah. Like, especially when you have enemies that are just not trying to fight you. They're just trying to pull you down. Like right. thinking about yeah. that and it doesn't have to be an undead enemy or whatever. Like this is what crocodiles do. They don't fight sure. things. They grab them and go to the bottom and spin until the until thing stops yeah. moving. Until the thing so stops moving. Yeah. DMs, I don't know how much you want to implement that kind of, uh, those kinds of tactics, but that is how they act. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's a real good point. But I, to like stick with bogs and like for, for a minute, like, I like a bog as an adventure site and, and one of the features of it is, is it's preservative quality, right? Like right. there could be anything in there. There could be wood, there could be iron, there could be bodies, there could be treasure. It could have been sacrificed to something. If we want to take that acidic quality to them, why is that? Is there something here that's polluting this place and making it even more acidic? Going a step further, there's like the quaking bog where there's a layer of peat, which is just decaying plant matter, right? that that sits on top of it that makes it maybe seem like solid ground but it undulates and moves and has waves and maybe breaks apart and and floats atop a, a bog pool or something like that like and what i enjoy about all of these things is that interplay between the aquatic and the the terrestrial right like being able to be on dry land wetland but also just the themes of menace and hidden threats and decay and the like that persist throughout them. Like they just have a menacing quality. All wetlands mm -hmm. do. Uh, and I really, mm -hmm. really like that about them uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, most definitely. Um, but, but like you said, because like say just sticking with bog, that there's things uh, that are preserved, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that means there are resources that, that people would be interested in going and getting, you know, this, yeah. This caravan was seen was said to be returning from that site laden with treasure. And nobody ever saw them again once they went through the the smoking bog or whatever. you. Right. I mean, like, this is how oh, you God. see it adventure, right? You say, hey, there's something at the bottom of that. Right. You know, yeah. You see a glint of gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that the including things underneath these 
the bogs, right? Like whether it's magic weapons, whether it's like, uh, you know, the caravan that went lost and you're looking for both what happened to them and something valuable that they were carrying or like a long lost magic item that was rumored to be in this place or like, or placed here or, or thrown here, lost here, uh, for some reason. You know, I, I kind of like the idea of, of that being the source of, of, of the resource, you know, and it very, may very well be the place, uh, or the reason why, um, this place is like, magical or, or cursed or something like that, right? Like this thing is here polluting this place, but it could be sacred or holy. Um, I really like bog mummies, right? I really like the, mm -hmm. the actual people they pull out of, of bogs that are, you know, like sometimes millennia old or lo older now well-preserved they are. And like just running with that as a concept for undead, they're being like, you know, preserved Un, you know, undead mummies underneath this place that are enacting either some ancient ritual or guarding something or, or the like, like they don't have to be a threat. They could be part of the resource could be that like finding them and, and getting information from them or access to whatever it is that they're guarding uh, as part of that. Um, it could also be a cool source mm -hmm. of just like magical materials. Like I want to build a, mm -hmm. you know, cool wand or staff or a magic weapon. It's like, Go get some preserved wood or metal from one of these places and uh, and mm -hmm. find <laughs> use that. <laughs> yeah, or I mean, hell, you, you it could be uh it could be a means to uh to a cure. What if your mm -hmm. player is affected with some magical malady, some disease, uh, and only a certain type of acid will like burn it away? So you have to go find this bog and bathe your arm, you know, in this acid and survive. That's but it's right, the only yeah. way. To, to, yeah. because you have some kind of mummy rot or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, you and it's the only thing that can stop this magical uh, illness, short of you know finding a tenth level cleric or whatever. Oh sure, you yeah, know? yeah, but they're not always around, and where's the adventure in that? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I know we've mentioned this with our other adventure environment shows, but it applies here too, and 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 perhaps um, appropriately so is that rare herbs and plants and other things. Uh, tend to be found in these kinds of environments. And so placing like similar things, but magical in your own uh, adventure locations is perfectly appropriate. Say like, you got to go in the swamp and find this rare flower to get this, you know, like maybe it only grows on a certain dryads tree in the middle of one of these things. And then it's like super rare or guarded or, or hidden away some, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. And like, th that's part of the adventure that you go here for the flora, you go here for something that grows here. Or the like, um, you know, like one of my favorite <laughs> uh, comic books is like Swamp Thing, right? Like the, yeah. the idea that that all of this matter, all of this life is connected somehow. And mm -hmm. and maybe it's, you know, in the adventure you're using, it's not like a person or a monster or a creature or something, but like a location or a plant, you know, a, a tree of life or something like that. You could easily see it being a swamp, um, you mm -hmm. know, just because of the abundance and variety of, uh, of life yeah. down there. Oh, definitely. Uh, having, having any kind of magical site, like in the middle of some kind of swamp, come on, like, yes, just do it. Maybe right. it wasn't a swamp when this site was first <laughs> built, but was laid low by the, the magic's work there. And, you know, the waters flooded in and flooded the whole area. Who knows the reason for it? I mean, uh, one of my, one of my favorite little, just like tidbits of like, uh, what was it? Mad Max Fury Road. When they're driving mm -hmm. and they go through the place uh, where everybody's up on like sticks, they're up on, you know, like lifts because they're going through some weird, gross, it looks like a bog uh, yeah. with just birds flying overhead. But that's it. Just people yeah, it's like oil having to use <laughs> stilts to walk yeah. around uh, like these bog walkers. Um, I mean, I just that to me, I'm like, I want to I want to know what that village looks like. I want to know right, what it right. is they do, how they survive, like. Because those are that that is an interesting location and an interesting site for things to happen. I, I agree. Like there's something about a, a swamp that, that becomes very memorable. And one of the things that I was just sort of couldn't believe when I first read about it, I don't know, maybe that's just because I'm dumb or something, but like the the quaking probably not. bogs, right? Those <laughs> those giant yeah. mats of like floating material that have trees growing on them and you can walk on and like I immediately thought of like, okay, I have to have an adventure location set there. Um, for me, this is a place that's like 
probably uh you know has some sort of primal connection or or significance to druids nature magic or something like that like i could see it being the heart of a swamp or, or in this case a bog like I, you know the, the tree that's there perhaps is magical or maybe there's like a magical animal that lives on this floating mat uh as it as it just sort of like navigates the various channels and ponds uh of this place and that you know finding the location of it is the challenge and then getting there and passing some sort of test or whatever by the 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 guardian of that place would be a big part mm -hmm. of it um like just like that image of a floating island that just has something rare and special on it yeah you gotta find yeah, it I'm, it's never in the same place yeah. twice oh definitely uh considering like you mentioned earlier kind of the meeting of like like a, a bog like that would be a great meeting of like earth, water, and air. So what if maybe a, a small tree on that peat bog island got struck by lightning uh, from some god or something, and it just has like an eternal flame on it? So you have like a meeting of all four elements on this peat bog, and that's the only way you know it. Like in the distance, all of a sudden you see what looks like torchlight, mm, yeah. and you realize no, it's just this tree or this bush that's been on fire. And you can go talk to that burning bush, not to get too biblical with it, but, <laughs> you know, maybe there's some... You take your inspiration uh, where you can get it. <laughs> yeah, you take it where you can get it, and therefore you have, like, some kind of elemental bog where you can go talk to these spirits of just, like, of the... Maybe it's the the spirit of, of this planet itself or, like, the Earth itself, yeah. uh, because this is the, the coalescence of all the elements, and, you know, this is where it finds its voice. As it talks through the fire or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's really cool, especially the four elements thing. Uh, I, I really like that. Um, I, I, uh, I, I mentioned earlier about sort of like the 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 bog ghoul, bog mummy shrine mm -hmm. of some kind, and I've cooked up uh, places for some of the some campaigns that I've had where they're similar to that, where it's like this place is ancient. Like when when this shrine was built here, this wasn't flooded. There was there wasn't a wetland, you know. And the the undead that are down there, as your boat passes overhead, you know, they swore an oath to defend this place always. And, you know, when it flooded uh, and became a bog, they just stayed and they continue enacting these sort of rituals. And so, you know, fi finding out that, that it's even there as part of the uh, the adventure and then like getting them to trust you uh, would be another Um but I've also had bogs where like this whole place is the is like a graveyard that this is where a mm -hmm. certain group of of you know humanoids or, or whoever like dump their enemies and and this place is both like sacred to their god of war uh you know and and also inc like incredibly dangerous because all of these bodies are are just like waiting just beneath the surface to come back to life and to like grab you like they're all you know uh, they're all undead and and they're just looking for a chance to uh, get some kind of revenge or something and that's pretty much like mm -hmm. real direct reference to that bog you're talking about in in lord of the rings where it's like this is the this, you know this is where all the dead are and you could see them yeah. as you're walking through here stay on the path stay on the log road Right. Don't don't leave the, the floating log uh, footpaths that are around here. Otherwise, uh, they'll get you. You know, that's a mm -hmm. um, that's probably really evocative. Yeah. And I mean, in a, uh, you know, a dr draw from all points of inspiration because it doesn't have to be something so, you know, undead and, and death and negative. Like if you think about uh, the swamp in Avatar mentioned that many mm. times because it's a very evocative place where right. this is like the central point of like vegetation in the world and you can literally reach anywhere uh mm. through this this the 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 sacred heart tree at the center of the swamp yeah yeah um, yeah and it has a life of its own because it is it has so much life connected to it like you know these are going to be like very important places to for the druids and any kind of naturalist in your world and right. i mean hell it doesn't have to be an adventure location it could be part of your background like, yeah. you know, you could have a, a druid or a, a lizard folk that is from one of these places mm -hmm. and this is their home and they know the ins and outs. They know where you don't step, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, certainly. And, and so, certainly. 
uh, it doesn't always have to be just for DMs. Like, uh, no, you know. no, that's that's very true. That's that's a good point. That's a real good point. Um, I'd say like another big one for me that I really want to use as an adventure location. I'm, this is one that I could see being like a a mini sandbox or or even bigger. Is like take a a, a mangrove uh, forest, right, with the trees that sort of the roots that lift them above the water and. And, you know, they're, they're specially adapted for you know, like coastal regions, things. And a lot of times, like there are these, you know, a lot of stuff going on in the roots of the trees or in these shallow coastal waters, uh, of these kind of environments and just blow it up, right. Make it so that they're, they're just gigantic trees that you ply your boat underneath and between these root structures. And so like mm-hmm. settlements are built further up on the trees or something like that. And sort of take like the imagery and, and ideas behind the, like a wood elf tree village or something like that mixed with more of the swampy wetlands style of gaming of like, you're going to need a boat to get around here. There's a lot of dealing with like submerged dungeons and underwater ruins and things like that. But then there's also the verticality of it being a forest and all of the things that are in the canopy above you. And, Mm -hmm. and like, I think you can have a really cool, and different type of environment to set adventures in, uh, with that. That's, that's, that's one that's, I, I just, uh, always come back to and just think about what you could do with that. Mm -hmm. Swarms of dire piranha, things like that. (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But what you're doing is, uh, dovetailing into our next little section here, which is like, what are the inhabitants and encounters that you can really have here? Um, Mm -hmm. uh, because I, what like what you just said made me imagine like say the the giant like home tree or whatever from avatar but in a swamp where they're not on the ground all that happens yeah they're up in the trees and the vines with their little beds and whatever but when you come down to the ground they hop on their like seahorse and whatever instead of the normal (laughs) whatever horses and connect their weird (laughs) tail tentacles (laughs) yeah salamanders mud skipper (laughs) crawfish you know, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. And having a giant crawfish boil where it's just one right. big crawfish <laughs> in a, just, in a pot. Yeah. Not a- <laughs> Roasted like a pig. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like the inhabitants of these places. All right. I'll be honest. I got to make a dungeon in a dire beaver dam. Like I need to. Right. Yeah. And so like dire beavers are one of those things that I just, to me, like I, I, I hear that and I'm immediately kind of terrified. Right. I, I don't really mm-hmm. want to, see anything like that i don't want to really think about it i'm not really sure why um but yeah just this sort of like giant sort of creature that swims around and chews up the environment it's not here to like kill you it's not a menace or or something like that but it's it could care less the damage that it's doing uh Mm -hmm. you know to everything else around here by damming up the place and you know maybe you have to go in there and get a pelt or something but I don't know, just a big pile of logs and sticks and debris that, that have little tunnels dug out from them seems like really cool and, and necessitates the inclusion of dire beavers in your encounter tables. Um, well, well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, use the Hoover Dam as, <laughs> as your basis. Right. Yeah, big, yeah, you know, <laughs> go big. Sticking with the theme of giant animals are terrifying. Um, herons and cranes and the like you can see being a, a, just a terrifying type mm-hmm. of encounter for this like you know it flies over to you you're in a boat it's stabbing down puncturing holes in the boat spearing your uh your pcs stirring up all kinds of trouble it's gonna fly away you know i that sounds like a very um i don't know terrifying encounter depending on how it goes Mm -hmm. um but a lot of fun to think about um there's all kinds of giant fish you know yeah well i was gonna say yeah, giant cranes and herons is one thing. Imagine a giant pelican that can scoop up half the party. Oh, yeah, in its in its freaking bill love and start carrying it away. And like, what what happens then? Like, <laughs> it's gonna feed you. Now you're four hundred feet in the air fighting this thing. You're inside its mouth. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I yeah, I, I kind of like that. Giant animals are, are are can be cliched, but they're also really fun when you sort of like think about them like that. Like it's just gonna pick you up and move you, um, <laughs> you know. Like it's like similarly with something like a similarly with something like a giant catfish or something that just like swallows you up Oof. and swims away, mm-hmm. and now you're just mm-hmm. sort of in the belly of it, uh, trying to get out while it's underwater. Um, 
other giant fish that I can't, that I would definitely include because they scare me are like pike and gar. Uh, it's just yeah, a nasty. very menacing, uh, patient look to them. And then of course, everybody's favorite, like the giant crocodile, you know, it, it's anything that could like swallow your whole boat or capsize it, uh, or that you could tame and ride around on, uh, is, uh, is definitely gonna be included in, uh, in the swamps and wetlands and the like that I'm, uh, I'm building. Moving on to like the actual monster monsters, uh, they could be there. There's some classics that you find in wetlands, trolls, black dragons, hags, uh, hydra, frogamoth, who doesn't love the inclusion of a frogamoth, uh, in mm -hmm. their, uh, wetlands. Um, also like the shambling mound. I was, that one sticks out to oh, me yeah. as being a, a memorable encounter. The first time you come across one of those. So there's just a lot of like really iconic monsters you can draw on. Um, but I really find that like just thinking about the natural fauna that will be there and making them monstrous is, is almost always, uh, something that gets my juices going. Cause it's like, I, I don't know, <laughs> they're, they're kind of already monstrous, it's just, you know, they're animals. So you don't think of them that way. <laughs> You feel burp shamed? Oh man! Don't let others shame you for your burps and farts. Yeah, <laughs> I get shamed for my toots all the time. <laughs> leave my toots alone. Does your significant hey, other shame you for your leave burps those and toots farts? alone? Oh, yeah. sorry. I just started singing Pink Floyd. Does your, does your <laughs> child try to pin their farts on you? <laughs> oh, we just pin them all on the animals. That's why it's good to yeah. have a dog and a cat. Always good so that. No matter what happens, you can always look to the animal 